<clears throat> in some ways, I have a similar path as David was speaking about to Plassey through Amsterdam. But I, I started in coming from New York uh, and not Canada. Um, I studied in New York in the late 80s, 86, 85 to 87 for masters in sculpture. And I had gone there quite young. So I was suddenly in this late 80s art scene in New York where everyone was trying to be an art star. And the School of, Civil, of, of, School of Visual Arts had a gallery in Soho, which I showed at at other shows. And you were thrust into this kind of system where you were, you know, going to gallery openings, meeting people, trying to get curators or dealers or collectors to your studio. And uh, I was participating in this and, and was having some people to my studio, which I had rented after school and was living at the time in New York afterwards. But I also was connected with artist-run spaces, one being Brooklyn Waterfront Artist Coalition in Brooklyn, which had a annual show in Dumbo. At that time, it was mostly just artists. Now it's a very posh neighborhood. But there was an annual show there that then I began to participate in, a sculpture show. And another artist-run uh, space was Rich Street Gallery, which was located in the Lower East Side. So these were spaces where artists were paying the rent um, and having a two-week show, sometimes one-week show, during the year. And uh, there I was meeting artists and different people who were from abroad that had come to New York or they had studied and stayed there. But at the same time I was studying visual art. I was very much interested in new music and, ex and experimental improvised music scene, which was happening at the same time. So I was going to concerts there at the same time I was studying art and doing things and meeting a lot of musicians, composers, uh, experimental, intermedia artists at places like Roulette and then later uh, Experimental Intermedia, which was Phil Niblock's space. And I found this scene very open and much more dynamic than the art scene, which was about just meeting people, putting your work in a space. It was very competitive in a way. And this place, this scene seemed very open because you had people coming from Europe, from abroad, spending time there, exchanging and going back. <clears throat> so it was through context there that, and, and others in the, in the art world scene, uh, mostly the artist spaces, um, that I then uh, decided this was a kind of route that I wanted to follow. So I got rid of my studio, and I decided to be more condensed so that I could travel. And I set off for Amsterdam. I had a sabbatical from where I was working at the time at the Bronx Zoo. And I uh, decided to spend six months there. The year before, I had traveled just on a short trip. And through contacts I had met in New York through these uh, through the uh, new music scene, I went to a performance in uh, Herr uh, Togenbosch at this uh, Melt Fabric. And there I met Milos. I met a lot of other Dutch and uh, uh, international other artists there. And the next year when I went back, I was spent, planning to spend that time. I went to visit Milos because I'd heard about the Plassi. So then he uh, invited me to go. So it was connected in a way, but I was sort of on a, you know, on a journey to get there. And it took me a while. I um, traveled across Germany with uh, two other artists from uh, Canada and Australia who were traveling there. And it took about two days because we made many stops. But when I got to the border, suddenly they couldn't continue in Dresden because they didn't have visas. So for me, I was, not, I was already on my way. They let me in, so I just walked across. So it was a kind of, you know, very open situation already from the, from the beginning. And when I got to the monastery, there were, you know, people that I knew that I had met in Amsterdam the year before and different things. So it showed me a very different kind of um, approach away from the object making, the studio making, and at the time also the interest in sound, it, 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 uh, it, it became very important at the time. And that was the one thing, like I wrote in the, in the, one th in the um, blurb, that 
it was just a very open, open time uh, and a very improvised time. Um, when you came there, the space was so, so, so overwhelming that you got absorbed into it, at least I did. And the instruments that I brought um, suddenly became huge in that space. It became bigger than, than this, anything I'd heard before. So it also had a big influence on type of music and sounds and things I would continue to do from that time. Um, I continued then, the next year I came back after uh, going back to New York for a year and I decided it was important enough for me to quit my job and just go to, go to Europe and spend time there. And the time spent at, at the second one, the Hermit um, Growth Rings, the instruments that I created there are, are in this exhibition. After making them, I decided I wanted to keep them in Plassey because that's where they belonged in my mind. They became kind of instruments that then, if I when I returned, I used them, but other people used them. So maybe think a little bit of the earlier talk about art as a commons. Um, for me, it was sort of the 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 work was so connected to the place that I couldn't see it in, in uh, any other place, uh, leaving there. It wasn't mine, it was more part of that place. So it was something that uh, you know, stayed with me through that time. And um, yeah, I guess trying to think about how then the 90s at that time was very open. Um, I was thinking how after Plassey ended, the legacy of Plassey, like there was the Orbis Pictus exhibition in 96, but there was a later exhibition that developed into another Orbis Pictus, and that was in 2000 in Rodolphium, Hanish de Herr. And at the time, Plassey had just ended in 2000, and I was thinking, okay, where, what will happen to the instruments there, or, or Milos, he, we went there, and they just had a perfect segue. They went from Plassey to the monastery to the Hanish de Herr, which in many respects continued this open, creative uh, atmosphere that had originally started in, in Plassey. And that, in a way, has continued through, even though things have changed quite a bit from the 90s and from that time. But, um, yeah, so it's just about it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.